The first word in Unit 1 is apparel. Apparel. Apparel functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun meaning clothing or dress. By July, many department stores are selling fall apparel. Or, in Shakespeare's As You Like It, the heroine disguises herself in men's apparel. Or, apparel can be used as a verb that means to put clothes on or to dress up. The choir members may be appareled in all the colors of the rainbow. Or, the guests at a Halloween party may apparel themselves in colorful and imaginative costumes. Now, let's try the second word in Unit 1. It is besiege. Besiege. Besiege is a verb meaning to attack by surrounding or to cause worry or trouble. A swarm of flies may besiege a group of picnickers. And someone who loses a job may be besieged by financial difficulties. Compress and compress. Which pronunciation you use depends on how the word functions in a sentence. Let's see how this works. If word three is being used as a verb, meaning to press together or to reduce in size or volume, it is pronounced compress. Compress. Be sure to compress aluminum cans before you put them in the recycling bin. Or, if you try to compress too much sightseeing into a single day, you will become exhausted. The other pronunciation of word three is compress. Compress. This pronunciation is used when word three functions as a noun, meaning a folded cloth or pad applied to an injury. The nurse placed a fresh compress on the patient's wound. And a first aid kit should contain packages of sterile compresses. Let's recap. Word three has two pronunciations. When it's used as a verb, it's pronounced compress. When it's used as a noun, it's pronounced compress. Let's move on to the next word. It is denounce. Denounce. Denounce is a verb meaning to condemn openly or to accuse formally. A series of newspaper articles may denounce a government official for taking bribes. Also, during the Soviet purge trials of the 1930s, many of Stalin's rivals were denounced as traitors. Our fifth word is dispatch. Dispatch. Dispatch functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a verb meaning to send off or out for a purpose, or to kill. The 911 operator dispatched two ambulances to the scene of the accident. Or dispatch can be used as a noun that means an official message, promptness, or the act of killing. We finish the meal with more dispatch than usual. Word six is douse. Douse. Douse is a verb meaning to plunge into a liquid or to put out quickly. It is easy to peel a tomato if you first douse it in boiling water. Or, in a theater, the stage lights may be doused at the end of a very dramatic scene. Our next word is expressly. Expressly. Expressly is an adverb meaning plainly or for a particular purpose. New laws expressly require the use of seatbelts. Also, we attended summer school expressly to learn more about computers. Let's move on to word eight. It is famished. Famished. Famished may be used as an adjective or as a participle, meaning suffering severely from hunger or some other lack. Famished bears may raid campsites, cabins, and garbage cans in an effort to find something to eat. And a person who works alone may be famished for company by the end of the day. Word nine is forsake. Forsake. Forsake is a verb meaning to give up or to leave. A popular performer may forsake show business for a career in politics. Or, during the California gold rush, thousands of prospectors forsook their homes in the hope of striking it rich. Our next word is gainful. 
gainful. Gainful is an adjective meaning profitable or bringing in money or special advantage. A person may be fortunate enough to turn a hobby into a gainful business. Or a particular business venture may not prove as gainful as one had hoped. Word 11 is immense. Immense. Immense is an adjective meaning very large or beyond ordinary means of measurement. When you cross the United States by train, you realize just how immense this country is. And scientists believe that the rainforests are home to an immense variety of undiscovered plants and animals. Next up is inept. Inept. Inept is an adjective meaning totally without skill or appropriateness. A person may be a skilled writer, but an inept public speaker. Or, a person who lacks social skills may sometimes make inept or tactless remarks. Word 13 is ingenious. Ingenious. Ingenious is an adjective, meaning showing remarkable originality or resourcefulness. The pioneers who settled the American West were hardy and ingenious individuals. And critics may praise the ingenious plot of a new film. The next word in Unit 1 is instantaneous. Instantaneous. Instantaneous is an adjective, meaning done in an instant or immediate. Thanks to orbiting satellites, fax machines, and other marvels of modern technology, communication over long distances is almost instantaneous. Or... Have you ever taken an instantaneous dislike to someone? Let's move on to word 15. It is irk. Irk. Irk is a verb meaning to annoy or make weary. People who boast endlessly about their achievements may irk you. Also, wasteful government spending may irk the voting public. Our next word is libel. Libel. Libel functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun, meaning a statement that unfairly or falsely harms a person's reputation. The author of a scandalous biography of a celebrity may be faced with a suit for libel. Libel can also be used as a verb that means to write or publish such a statement. Tabloid newspapers have often been accused of libeling entertainers and politicians. Word 17 is misgiving. Misgiving. Misgiving is a noun that means a feeling of fear or doubt. It is perfectly normal to feel some misgivings when you move to a new town. Or, jurors may express misgivings about the truthfulness of a particular witness. The next word is oaf. Oaf. Oaf is a noun meaning a stupid person or a big, clumsy, slow individual. The main character in a popular TV series may be a lovable oaf. Or, a person who looks like an oaf may be a surprisingly graceful dancer. Word 19 in Unit 1 is recede. Recede. Recede is a verb meaning to move backward, or to become more distant. Gulls feed on the crabs and starfish left on the beach as the tide recedes. Or, an artist may use perspective to make the background of a painting appear to recede into the distance. The last word in Unit 1 is repast. Repast. Repast is a noun meaning a meal. You may enjoy helping to prepare a holiday repast for your family. And, in many Latin countries, it is customary to take a nap after the midday repast. Now, let's review the words in Unit 1 once more. They 